what's a pirate's favorite programming language? R? No, Python. It's readable, it's flexible, it's got great packages. That's right, no jokes here, it's time for Serious Python. This makes sense, my name is Rick. Today I'll be talking about the book Serious Python, black belt advice on deployment, scalability, testing and more, written by Julien Danjou. We got a free copy from No Starch Press. So you read Python Crash Course. You know about loops, control flow, but you're wondering where to go next. Serious Python is a book for you. There's useful advice, tips, tricks and best practices to bring your simple programs to the next level. Now how do you use it? The book isn't really designed to be read from start to finish, but it's rather more of a reference book with different pieces of advice and practical tips that you can look up when it's relevant to your work. So what kind of advice in there? Here's an overview of the chapters. Chapter 1, starting your project. So it talks about setting up your projects, what to consider before doing it. Chapter 2 talks about models, libraries and frameworks and also talks about how they work under the hood. Chapter 3 goes into documentation and good API practices and also introduces you how to use them with Sphinx. Chapter 4 gets into the bane of many programmers' existence, time zones. How to handle timestamps and time zones. Chapter 5 talks about distributing your software, so how do you get your software to your users. And chapter 6 is something that everyone should be doing but not a lot of people actually do unit testing. You get some best practices and tutorials for the package PyTest. Chapter 7 talks about methods and decorators. And then we get to chapter 8, which talks about functional programming. In chapter 9, we peek under the hood of the language itself and we discuss the abstract syntax tree that's the inner structure of Python. Chapter 10 will help you to create better codes by looking into performances and optimizations, by using appropriate data structures, applying dynamic performance analysis, and how to identify bottlenecks. We get to chapter 11, which is about scaling and architecture. You learn about multi-threading using event-oriented or service-oriented architecture to create scalable programs. Chapter 12 talks about managing relational databases and how to use them with PostgreSQL, and then ends with Chapter 13, Write Less, Code More, some advice on a few different topics. As something neat about the book is that at the end of some chapters there's an interview. For instance, chapter 2 ends with an interview with Python core developer Doug Hellman and he talks about Python libraries. One of the things that stuck with me and that I will definitely keep using are the ETTools functions that are highlighted in the chapter about functional programming. Those functions will allow you to do things to a list and usually I would have just written my own functionality but now they're just there to use. I hope you'll find this book interesting. If you have any questions or comments, do leave them below the video. If you want to support the channel, check the affiliate links in the description. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.